Hello and welcome to jazzguitarlessons.net YouTube channel. This is a video I've always wanted to get across to past, current and probably future students as well. It's more of a learning how to learn lesson. So welcome and let's get going. Okay, so this is not a guitar oriented video per se, although I'll speak a lot about scale positions in just a moment. Uh, nevertheless, there are a lot of pragmatic suggestions at every step of the way. Everything we'll talk about, uh, I'll have call to actions for you and I believe you should try these things ASAP just to get your mind going in that direction for greater musical success and a more fulfilling musical life. It is my hope that uh, watching this video you'll uh, have a more exciting musical life with less frustrations and roadblock and have uh, in result a more fulfilling musical life and probably a more fulfilling life. Uh, luckily this video is not on moral issues, ethic issues, political or religious topics. Uh, however, I believe that all these topics can make you into a better person. Everything we'll talk about can be applied so you become a better musician, better person and a better human being altogether. So let's get going with the first topic. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, your approach, right? The way you approach things. And sorry if I ramble a little bit about this one. I have a student, a past student, let's call him Dan. Uh, and I always repeat the same story over and over on YouTube and in private lessons and even if I do webinars because Dan was a very smart player, a very, very advanced person and we worked on some comping t uh, topics together, so some chords. And at the end of the lesson I went, okay, uh, we covered this, so for next week you'll do this, that, 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 and I'll see you then. And Dan went, no, 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 no. Uh, now it's Dan speaking, no. When I do learn chords, I must first do that, I do a chord shape grid, uh, reference and I do this with it and I do that and I do that then I fully integrate in my playing. Uh, so I had two questions for Dan. Uh, first one was okay why do you need me then <laughs> if you already know it all and uh, secondly how Dan how is this approach working out for you so far? Probably not so well because you need an instructor get, to get you going further and this might be the case for you if you're struggling with anything. Uh, it might be because your approach is suffering. So the, the moral is of the story here is Dan was convinced that there was only one approach and was really sticking to his guns. No, stick to your guns. This is the way I do it. This is always the way I'll do it and it will always work. So our action step for this first one is maybe consider a different set of approaches. Tell yourself, say, what if someone else had the same issue, was addressing the same improv, uh, improv topic or problem? What if I was there to give you advice? What would you try and do different, right? Of course, questioning your approach will be hard and sometimes painful, but it can be extremely beneficial for you. So I urge you to change the approaches you take to the common musical issues that you have right now. On to our second topic, I want to talk about options, sometimes A, B options, right? Uh, I see a lot of manifestation of the camp issue on the internet. So you have people on for forums in one corner, I use only scales, you know, and my teacher was 95 years old and he's used scales all his life and Charlie Parker was only used scales. And in the other corner, like it's a boxing match, you have this other guy that says, no, 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 my teacher used only arpeggios and here are recorded examples that these guys used only arpeggios. <laughs> I see this all the time in my teaching too. And still, I believe this is a manifestation of sticking to an approach which might, as we discussed, might be uh, beneficial to start and look at different ways you can address problems to uh, you know, overcome roadblocks and frustrations. My recommended action step uh, with this regard, if you, stuck, you see yourself stuck to one way of doing things once again, when it re it's regarding two options, should I do scales, should I do arpeggios, when it's binary, just do both. Uh, when you're confronted with a dilemma, closely examine if the things you want to work on are mutually exclusive, meaning that working on scales precludes you from working on arpeggios. It's not the case at all. You could work on both. So a great reading on that is The Advancing Guitarist by Mick Goodrick. And I always, and the author states that, just do both all the time. Even if you don't have just binary choices, you have A, B, or C, maybe at a certain point you should examine all the possibilities and see what it does to your playing in the long run. 
Our next topic is my favorite one uh, of this video. It's called the backwards law. And I'll get to wh what's the origin of the backwards law in just a moment. Uh, simply, simply stated, sorry, it's creating more of the same problem by going to an extreme to solve it. If you're a perfectionist, you might experience this on a daily basis. I'll give you a perfect example in life. You have this bride and the bride wants to have a perfect wedding. By the same token, because she wants everything to be perfect, she ruins her wedding. So it's not perfect at all, right? So you go to an extreme to solve something and the problem just re-emerges. So it's a backwards law. It's like walking towards a house, but the house keeps getting further from you. Kind of counterintuitive. Let me bring back guitar now in the picture. Scale positions is one of those things that people are willing to go at length to, to solve. And there's a lot of videos on, on this channel you can watch where I give you specific advice. On, okay, now you know positions, now what's next? You know, don't use positions for this, for that, for that. And it's only at this point in my musical life, my teaching life, that I could uh, give you specific advice on why if you have this dogma of positions, you might be hurting yourself. So positions for the record, if you don't know what they are, uh, it's a way to segment the guitar fretboard into different areas so that you can solve the note location issue if you want. So if you have a G major scale and you play it here, um, and this is your second finger on the third string, on the third fret of the big string, you have an A note that you play third string, second fret, and there's only one location. Of course, there's an A on the guitar higher here, or higher there, but you don't need to consider those so long as you stick to a position. So say you learn a West Montgomery solo and you attempt to learn it all in a position because you believe that this is really the way to segment the fretboard and there is only one thing. So this is, once again, the, the backwards law. Well, you will suffer in phrasing a lot. And if you start watching West Montgomery or Joe Pass or Pat Metini, you realize they never stick to positions. Positions are a great way to learn something, to... to uh, navigate the fretboard for yourself if you want, but not necessarily a way to apply to your entire musical world. So be careful with the backwards law. And here's my, my quote. Uh, there's a great book by Mark Manson. I'll avoid um, stating the title here because it's a little bit vulgar. It's a, it was a little bit of swearing the title. So Mark Manson, look it up. Really interesting on how we create more of the same problems by trying to go to an extreme to solve it. By the same token, on this backwards law, I'm gonna ask you to see if you can get better problems. So here we are, sitting here, I have fingering issues with scales. So do you. Pat Metheny has fingering issues with scales too, and so did Wes Montgomery. They simply had better problems than we have with fingerings, all right? So I'll give you another example. You know, Elon Musk, probably founder, one of the co-founders of PayPal, uh, Tesla Motors, also SpaceX. So this guy was uh, probably the youngest billionaire in history. Anyways, before 40 years old becoming a, a billionaire, it's, it's quite a thing. And this man, this man had money problems, had to borrow money for rent after becoming a billionaire because he invested all of his money in business ventures. So he has money problems. He has better money problems than I, than I have. So see if you can... Uh, when you, you grab an approach and you try not to, to go at length to solve it in an extreme and then create more of the same problem, see if you create a better problem for yourself. So say you're sticking to positions and now you decide, I can't stick to positions, so I have a problem of note repeated in different places and where do I play this next A note? Well, you have a better problem now because your phrasing doesn't suck anymore. This is one, one of the ways you could say it. So your action step for this backwards law is don't be dogmatic, basically. Being dogmatic generates all sorts of problems and you're trying to, in fact, upgrade your issues. You're not trying to downgrade them or to stick to something you know or else you suffer from the backwards law. One interesting and last topic I want to discuss now is growth, growing. And basically it means that you're not the same or you're not at the same place you were five minutes ago, five hours ago, five days or five years ago. You look back and you really understand the distinction between you and say your adolescent self and your current self. So you know you were 16, you were thinking, 
that Metallica was the best rock band in history and that's, that was the end of music, they were genius and now you're like, hmm, maybe I started to listen to Mozart and think it's pretty good, right? So if you want to see it that way, growing means that you're wrong all of the time. You're simply less wrong as you grow. So here's our action step now for growth, which is admit you're wrong now or you were wrong about something. If it's, even if it's just one thing, it's liberating, you'll see, and I'll go first here. I was wrong about drop two chords voicings on the top strings. I believe that this was the only way to play good comping because I had seen Wes Montgomery do it and my teachers teach it to me. And whenever I'd see a player not using drop two inversions on top string, I'd be, nah, his comping is not really good. I was wrong about that because now I use a mixture of drop two chords and chords with roots on the lower strings and other sorts of guide tone comping and ideas. So the result of admitting you're wrong and growing is more confidence, more confidence in your own ignorance of things. You have a greater respect and compassion for other players or other you, human playing, uh, you, human playing, other players and human beings, and you have a faster growth because every time you admit to something being not quite where it should have been, although it was right for the time when you were 16 and listening to ACDC was fine, now you're someone else, you're somewhere somewhere else, and admitting and accepting your wrongness uh, leads to faster growth. Here we are to conclude this kind of meta philosophical video. Basically, it's just a lot of the same topic repeated and seen in a different light. It's kind of the reflection of the letting go concept or this acceptance concept found in Buddhism and other spiritual traditions. Sometimes I find it's, this is for me at least, we need to hear things, the same things in different contexts and worded differently in order to fully comprehend. So I hope it was helpful to you. Thank you. Feel free to rewatch this video. It might be important for you. There are certain things I've said that I'm personally still digesting and I really admit that. Uh, so the biggest takeaway is always question yourself, question your approach and question whatever you know or think you know. And the result is a more powerful, confident, open-minded approach to your life and to your music. And this is way more fulfilling than having to stick to your guns all the time. And if you're frustrated or feel you're experimenting roadblocks, this, is, this might be key, this might be crucial for you to grow. On this note, my name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. I will see you soon on the website, jazzguitarlessons.net. Improve your jazz guitar playing with a real teacher. Of course, feel free to share this video with your friends or on social medias. And please subscribe to this YouTube channel for more free jazz guitar lessons, philosophical topics, and interesting transcription and ideas. I'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you.